If you've ever wondered, do I need screws for this osteotomy or that osteotomy? This video is for you. I was trained in the Dr. Stephen Isham tradition. I've performed 1500 plus MIS cases run 40 plus small group private cadaver labs and i've hosted the international mis conference at the olc eight times in the next 10 minutes or so i'll answer the questions surgeons keep asking me gear fluoroscopy fixation office space surgery safety and give you a simple next step first question is mis legit or still fringe short answer legit for mild to moderate hallux valgus, MIS is recognized when indication and technique are sound. The 2024 AOFAS position statement on MIS HV lays out the landscape. So minimally invasive isn't just a logo, it's a discipline and it's approved and it's legit. Second question, MIS versus open procedures. Do patients actually do as well? So several studies say yes when done properly. A 2022 Frontiers in Surgery meta-analysis favored MIS on radiographic and clinical outcomes. A 2023 meta-analysis was more conservative and 2024 Living Systeming Review suggested newer generation MIS can be superior for certain measures. So bottom line, with discipline, technique, and selection, outcomes are comparable or better. I'll link all three in the description. Question number three, do I need internal hardware fixation for MIS forefoot osteotomies? Not always. In classic revered Inaishan bunion correction, stability comes from osteotomy geometry and discipline dressing, so no screws. For lesser mats, DMMO is designed as a no fixation approach with controlled settling via functional bandaging. I'll still use hardware if a case uh, truly demands it, but in my hands and in the Aisham lineage, fixation is unnecessary in many cases. I'll link a 2024 systemic review on Revered in Aisham, a 2016 prospective uh, JOSR study, a 2018 with versus without fixation series, and the standard DMMO papers. Question number four, do I really need fluoro? Well, soft tissue tenotomy or capsulotomy, you're fine without it. The moment you touch bone, use a mini seal. Safety beats bravado. Learning curve papers show fluoro use and time normalize uh, with wraps. Well, studies will be in the pinned resources. Fifth, what's the starter gear without buying the whole store? So keep it lean. Actually, I'm going to go over to my training lab and then I will show you quickly overview of those instrumentation and MIS drill set. Sounds good? I'll see you over there. Really use four of them. You know, this is how simple the minimally invasive surgery can be for foot and ankle surgery. Beaver blade handle typically holds uh, my MIS blades, you know, like 64, 67, uh, pretty much, and 62. Like three blades, that's what I use. And this is mini elevator to, after make a portal, to create, you know, nice portal, like release capsule around the bone where I'm going to make a bone cut. And then this is mini rasp. So, you know, I kind of roughen the, the kind of shiny, slippery cortical bone area before I apply to bone cut, like hammer toe, same deal. We make a portal and then, you know, just kind of grind them the initial area so that um, rota rotating burr, which cuts bone and creating osteotomy, it doesn't slip, kind of slip away. This is a bigger typical bone rasp. If I do bunion, let's say, and then, you know, kind of, kind of grind them down in a sharp corner or something like that, or I can flip it and then I can remove uh, some loose bone paste and stuff, you know, through the portal. Imagine there's a skin here, right? So really that's it. Well, this is called Osada. Unfortunately, they right now discontinued making it. So you might be able to find Osada drill set, um, tried and true, right? The most MI surgeons still use this. You, so on and off, forward and reverse, and then basically side control. And then you can see, um, most important thing guys is the uh, develop sensation and 
cutting bone with the lowest speed as possible because this instrumentation has high torque. So you don't need to speed like that. You're gonna burn bones and soft tissue and you're gonna take, create a lot of damage and you know, soft tissue swelling and wound dehiscence. Most of the doctors I teach don't go over more than half. So this is enough to control because this has very strong torque and you can cut it with just about this much speed, you know. Again, details you, you should learn in the cadaver lab setup. Uh, this one is one of my go-to now. It's uh, developed by a Korean manufacturer uh, called Seijin. They got different model. This is cheaper one, lower model. They have a higher line too. But I just wanna demonstrate, um, this, this is the foot, foot switch. You can adjust different RPM. I can remove hand piece and there's multiple hand piece available. Some of them are like only $50. Uh, some of them, uh, this is Korean made. This I think around, still very exp uh, inexpensive, like 150 or something like that. Um, and then this is German made and foot pedal. Again, see how quiet it is? I don't know if you can hear it. You don't need to speed too high. That's the most important part in MIS procedure. Anyway, I just gave you a quick tour because this is like some of the most commonly asked questions to me. In the background, you can see this is our MIS training lab I uh, created last year uh, because I've done 38 private cadaver labs to help foot and ankle surgeons with uh, minimally invasive surgery in the past since 2017, so right now past eight years. I've done five advanced MIS labs and then eight international MIFAS cadaver lab conference. So, you know, I have experience in teaching doctors. If you are interested in going deeper and learn MIS the right way, um, click this side or this side, you'll see a link. You can explore more about uh, MIS intensive program I developed so that you can see different levels and how you can achieve those with the right technique, right structure. So every procedure I perform and I help doctors and I teach other doctors perform, they're proven and evidence-based. I have collected over 200 articles and studies. Just uh, leave me a comment or send me a direct message. You know, if you want proof, I can show it to you, I can, we can connect. Again, uh, I just wanted to show you a quick tour of uh, our training lab, how we set up minimally invasive surgery, and then I briefly showed you uh, office-based surgical. Number six, hammer toe. Does percutaneous procedure hold up versus open procedure? Recent comparative work shows similar union, return to activity, and complication ranges when technique and aftercare are dialed. I'll link a 2024 JFAS comparative study. Number seven, interdigital corns and lateral fifth toe pain. Does percutaneous bony work actually help? Yes, for the right patient. Prospective and case series data show good relief with low complications when you keep the contour discipline. I'll link the 2021 cohort study and 2022 foot and ankle orthopedic series in the description below. Number eight, office-based surgery, safe or sketchy? Well, it's safe when protocol-driven documentations, checklists, and logs, and sterilization flow, they're aligned. A 2024 JAMA office study reported around 2% superficial infection rate comparable to or lower than many outpatient front ankle reports. I will include both for context so you can see the numbers. Number nine, the learning curve. How many reps until you feel safe to perform MIS? Well, it's not years. It's sequence and repetition and right system. So systemic reviews put the plateau somewhere around a few dozen cases for MIS uh, hallux uh, valgus with more floral and time early, but no clear spike in complications. My 60 day ramp is simple. Two supervised reps, a structured case planning call, then a quick debrief loop in our MIS elite community membership. Number 10, which three procedures should you start with now? Well, number one, soft tissue, 
extensor tenotomy and capsulotomy. No fluoron really needed fast wins. Number two, lesser digit bony work, digital exostectomy, and uh, percutaneous hammer toe work. Mini CRM is definitely recommended. Number three, lesser metatarsals, such as Taylor's bunion or uh, you know lesser metatarsal DMMO style osteotomies. The classic non-fixation pathway with proper selection and dressing. I'll add the DMMO technique resources below. Well, I want to tell you two traps to avoid while you learn MIS. So I call this uh, MIS hijack, which is the hardware first gimmicks pretending to be uh, minimally invasive. And the second one, I call it the cadaver lab conga line. Um, so it's like four to eight surgeons to one cadaver leg specimen and nobody builds tactile sensations and other sensations, you really need to develop uh, true MIS skills. So anyways, if you want this to stick, like you, be it becomes your skill set, you need real reps with your own hands-on experience, the right sequence and actual feedback from proper mentorship. If you have questions uh, around gear, floral angles or OBS policies, or anything around the MIS, please drop a comment, I actually answer. If you want a hands-on rep, we run a private MIS cadaver lab in Glenview, Illinois. So it's a tiny group capped at 12, one cadaver per surgeon, up to 10 CE hours, three to four times a year. It's designed to install skill, not sizzle. The link is in the description and in the pinned comment again. Okay guys, if this was helpful, hit like so more surgeons find it and subscribe for more on MIS for an ankle or practice growth, AI in healthcare and medical marketing for cash pay success. I appreciate you being here. I'll see you in the next video.